Hey everybody, this is Carlo here at Forge Glory Custom Leathercraft. I'm about to do a live video. So I'm doing the video with my with my phone and I'm watching on my iPad just in case you guys have got any questions for me. I can see the questions come by. All right. Well, I figured tonight I'm going to do a uh, fender bib so you guys can uh, yeah, can see how it's done. Kind of a start to finish type thing. All right. So this fender bib is going to have this art on it. This is what the, um, what the person who uh, wanted me to make it sent to me in a text message. So we'll be doing that. All right, so first I'm gonna, as you see, I uh, drew the lines for the, um, for the fender bib. And I just gotta cut it out. When I get this leather, it's actually a whole half a cow. So it's re actually really, really big. And I get it, cut it down to the uh, shapes and sizes that I need. Ooh, this thing is dull. We got my other one. See how dull this one is. Yeah, sharp, sharp knives are always the way to go. Makes things a lot easier. Less mistakes. All right, let's go. If it's really sharp. Yep, it's really sharp. I only, only need to pass by it two times, so now i got to clean this up over here. Clean up the mess of my dull blade made. There we go. Piece like that, I'm going to keep because I can get a strap out of that, so that goes into my pile of stuff I'm going to keep. As you see, uh, this leather is not flat. It's warped a little bit. And that's normal. When I get it, they aren't completely flat. Uh, the, the leather isn't completely fat, flat. <laughs> but I use um, some methods to, uh, to flatten it out. Mainly, I just wet it down and I put it underneath this slab of granite. And uh, let it dry a little bit. And that flattens it out. And so you guys with, uh, with heat shields and whatnot... If uh, or anything that I make, if it uh, if it gets warped, all you have to do is wet it down, put it underneath something heavy, smooth, and flat, and uh, that'll flatten it out for you. And then take it out and let it dry in a place that is away from the sun and room temperature. If you do it in the sun, or if you do it. Uh, you know, in a place that's not room temperature, it's going to warp again. So you got to keep it out at room, in a place that's room temperature. So what I'm doing right now is just beveling the edges. So I can get a nice, smooth, rounded feel to the edge. And I like to use the uh, point zero beveler. It always gives me a nice edge. Uh, the size of the beveler that you'd use is going to depend on the thickness of the leather that you use. On this uh, vegetable tan 10 to 11 ounce thickness uh, works perfectly. It gives me the edge that I like to use anyway. Some people like more, some people like less, but for me this works out pretty awesome all right so now we've beveled it and we've done the cutting so I don't need my cutting board anymore let's set that off to the side I just want to set it underneath here put your cutting board underneath your granite block and that'll help with the uh, the sound whenever you're cutting all right well I got a lot of people watching thanks for watching everybody welcome to the party Hope you enjoy. 
Uh, Mike Paolillo. Sorry, I, I know I butchered your name. Said, hope I can see mine made. Well, I... You know, send me a message with what your order number is. And if it's something that I can make uh, on video, then I'll do a live video and you can watch. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna case the leather. Casing the leather is uh, just dampening it pretty much. I don't know why they call it casing. There's some old, old school reason for that name, but you just dampen the leather, let that soak in a little bit. And that makes the leather pliable. So whenever I start doing the art, It's a lot easier. It'll take the art a lot better. Uh, some people, they'll uh, spray it, put it into a plastic bag, Ziploc bag, and put it in the freezer overnight. Uh, I mean, the wetness goes through the whole piece of leather, but I don't understand why a lot of people do that. <laughs> I don't understand. I. I don't, I don't know. I mean, nothing that I do needs to be that wet. Um, but a lot of people do, and that just increases your time uh, drying. So, you know. Yeah, as you guys know, I'm, I'm backed up. And nobody wants me to increase my time <laughs> making something. So, um, I try to avoid things that make things take longer. So, this is going to have my traditional edge here and you're going to get a little bit of bounce with this so if you're prone to seizures <laughs> might want to switch off until I get my edge done seizures headache motion sickness whatever the camera's on a mount on the table so yeah, there's going to be some vibration here all right let's see Thank you. Hello. Hello, John Weber. Thanks for watching. Thank you, everybody that's that's just tuning in with us. So tonight, I'm going to get this done. I have a flask that I'm going to get done tonight. And a couple other things. I have them all in the mail tomorrow for my wonderful patrons. So if you guys have any questions about my leather work, you know, how I got started, anything that you want to ask, please go ahead and ask. But save the questions about uh, when's my order coming out for any kind of private messages or to send me in a private message or an email because um, I can't look up your order while I'm on live because I'd have to go on my phone and that would take some time. And, you know, this, this video is going to be about making... Making some products here. And after a while, once you get used to it, you can go a little faster. That's the nice thing is, you know, I mean, professionally I've been doing this for about six years. So I've learned to move a little faster than my early days. Things took me a lot longer. Kansas City Cheese, Montreal Canadiens. Awesome to see you work, Michael. I will, uh, I will annotate it, your order, uh, to remind me to do a live video. Now I can't guarantee the time. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm working on it, that's that's when I do the that's when I do the videos. So hopefully you'll be on at the same time. So yeah, Friday night and I'm working yesterday after work was done. I uh, went to go hang out with some friends on the motorcycle. Not sure if you guys saw my recent post, but the night ended in a, in a disaster. It was pretty horrible. Um, 
I was going down the road. It was a very dark road. It's going about 45 miles an hour. That was the speed limit on that road. And, you know, at night I don't speed that much. And, well, okay, sometimes I do, but <laughs> last night I wasn't. Uh, anyway, uh, very, very dark. There was no street lights or anything where I was. And there's this guy on the road. Um, he's walking the direction of traffic, so he didn't see me coming up behind him. Uh, he had his thumb out trying to hitch for a ride and I didn't see him until it was too late and I hit his arm with my handlebars which uh, knocked him down of course and then I lost control of my bike um, it went into a wobble and gosh you know I know that when you go into a wobble you're supposed to throttle it out but I was freaked out about this guy that I just hit with my handlebar so I wanted to stop as soon as possible. So before the wobble was done, I hit my brake, which made me go into a worse wobble, and I went down also. So that really sucked. Um, you know, I mean, I was, you know, I was fortunate. I, I have uh, bruises and some scrapes. You know, big bruise on my elbow big bruise on both knees, uh, scrapes on my elbow, scrapes on my knees. Um, but you know, guy, the guy that I hit, obviously his arm is broken. Uh, we could tell there on the side of the street and I'm sure he probably, uh, cracked some ribs. I mean, I hope all I hit was his arm and I didn't hit his ribs, but you know, he, he wasn't, he was pretty drunk. And uh, he wasn't able to answer very many questions there. I'm sure he was, well, I mean, he was drunk and in shock. But as I started walking up to him, I could smell the alcohol from not too far away. It's pretty bad. So so if you decide that you're too drunk at the, uh, at the bar and you're going to walk home, don't walk in the street. And walk on the side of the road where you're facing traffic so you can see if somebody's coming at you. And, you know, preferably wear light-colored clothes. Man, I did not see the... And I was riding with a buddy of mine, and he was actually a little bit behind me. And we, were, we were staggered. I was in the front, he was behind me, and he said that he didn't even see the guy. <sighs> so, yeah. And then two people who... Two different vehicles stopped to help me out you know, help pick up my bike and make sure I was okay. Uh, they passed the guy and they said that they didn't even see him. And he was, in, he was actually in the road, laying down on the road. And they said that they didn't, they didn't see him because it was dark. And he was kind of off to the side. So thankfully they didn't run over him or anything. But of course, you know, we dial 911. Uh, got the cops there, got an ambulance there. Uh, got him, you know, to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel I feel sorry for the guy. I mean, I hope they, I hope they didn't give him a ticket for public intoxication. I mean, dude's gonna have problems with his arms for the rest of his life. With his arm for the rest of his life. So I think that's punishing enough. I mean, I mean, geez. You know, I'm not dead. He's not dead. You know, he got his punishment there. So I hope they didn't give him a ticket or any kind of citation. I didn't get any. You know guy admitted to walking in the street and being drunk so you know they said it was no fault of mine but yeah pretty horrible night after it was all said and done got home about midnight i woke my wife up uh asked her to check me out make sure i was okay <laughs> I, was, I wasn't bleeding anywhere that we missed and um i wasn't bleeding and you know other than some bruises it didn't look too bad, so. But uh, yeah, of course this morning, I am so sore. My left shoulder is very, very, very sore. I'm sure I'll be sore for a couple of days and it'll go away. And if it doesn't go away, I'll go to the doctor and have it checked out.
Oh uh, yeah, that's my uh, exciting story from yesterday. So this morning I was uh, kind of lazy about everything. It's kind of moped around the house, took things easy. Took my bike to the shop so they could uh, start getting the estimate ready for my insurance. Called my insurance and all that good stuff. Oh, where'd the template go? Oh, don't tell me I didn't bring the template. All right, I gotta go grab the template real quick. All right, here is my fancy schmancy template. Yep, it is just cardboard cut the shape that I need it and then uh, for the bolts I have these holes right there and so these are four inches apart ten inches down um, that'll fit most Harleys, but the guy sent me the measurements for how far apart his bolts were so I can get it right. And now I gotta put a hole. Alright. Right there. Hole one. Oops, I hit my phone. All right, hole one, hole two, and hole three. All right, so this is the space. So on this guy's seat, the seat will be back here, and then it has these uh, brackets that come out, and that's where the bolts are gonna uh, attach. And then this bolt is gonna be, it's the bolt furthest down on the, on the, on the fender. All right, so for the sake of the video, because I didn't want to have to print this out, you know, I didn't know what size this was going to be, how much how much room I was going to have to play with here, so I uh, printed out three different sizes, and it looks like this is going to be the winner here. All right. So... Usually I would wait until this border is done and then I'd measure the space, make sure, and that way I'm only printing out one and I'm not wasting paper. But for the sake of this video, since I didn't know exactly how much space I was going to be having, hmm, maybe this will work, will it? Uh, a little too big. All right. Well, yeah, for the sake of the video, I went ahead and printed out three different sizes, so... So I wouldn't have to stop and print and it's printing. My computer stinks. It's very old. Not old, but crappy. It takes a while. So this is how I uh, apply the art. You know, when it's something that's sent to me, I mean, when it's something that I draw, it's drawn on paper, and then, you know, I, I do all that good stuff. Oh, come on. There we go. But here we go. You know, I can, I have this stylus that I use, but when it's uh, a piece of paper that I'm using and, and not an actual, you know, template, something that's covered in plastic, you know, I'm going to use over and over again. Um, you know, usually, you know, if it's a piece of art that I know I'm going to use over and over again, I'll cover it with plastic and whatnot. And with that, the, uh, what's called the stylus works really well but when it's just paper that hasn't been treated or covered or anything then a pen works better on the paper
And I always, you know, print something out or always draw it on paper first. Uh, paper is cheap and very disposable. Leather is a lot more expensive. So I, for the fear of trying to freehand something on leather, I don't do that. I'm not that good of an artist. Uh, so I always have what I'm going to do drawn up or printed out. Uh, before saves a little bit of money uses a little bit of extra time but because once I make these lines it's permanent on the leather there's no erasing so I'm stuck with whatever whatever I put on there and if I totally mess it up then I, I lose that whole piece of leather and all the time doing everything else on it, so. All right, I'm gonna check over here, the messages, I have any questions coming through? No questions coming through, all right. Not a talkative bunch tonight, that's all right. I've been told that these videos of me doing the leather work are rather cathartic. <laughs> it's relaxing. to watch the work happen and I'm I don't know about for the rest of you but for me it is relaxing you know it's it's a creative outlet it's relaxing it helps a lot with the good old keeping your hands busy and whatnot and since I really enjoy it, it doesn't feel like I'm working He told me what this was, and y'all will have to forgive me. I completely forgot what this symbol was for, so. I think it had something to do with the military, but I mean, I was in for 10 years, and I don't remember this. You know, I was in the Army for 10 years, and I don't recognize this. Uh, the symbol, but if anybody knows, feel free to chime in. My little the order is watching with me and asked what something like this sells for. Uh, I want to say this one was seventy. Um, and that includes shipping. Don't quote me on that. You'll have to go on my website, forgeglory.com to confirm. But I think this one went, went for 70. Uh, but I'm not doing any stitching on it. Uh, I'm not doing anything crazy to it. It's when, you know, whenever stitching's added, that's, uh, that's when the price goes up a lot. Uh, Raymond Myers, what's up, Carlo Lords? Hey, Raymond, how you doing, man? Thanks for watching. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna mess up your name, so forgive me. Than, Thanasi. Uh, he said, uh, "Hello, is there any advice you can give on someone thinking about getting into leather crafting?" Um. Yeah. <laughs> First, decide what you're going to make, and then buy the leather and tools appropriate to what you're going to make. I see a lot of people will go out and they'll buy these kits. You know, there's there's some leather crafting kits, and you get them for a good price, uh, but once they start actually figuring out what they want to make, they find that they don't use half of it, and... The discount that they got for making, for buying the kits with, with a whole bunch of tools in it, uh, didn't end up sa saving them any money uh, because in the end, they didn't, you know, there was a bunch of tools in there that they didn't use. So it would have been cheaper for them to 
uh, buy the tools uh, one at a time than buying the kit because they were stuck with the whole kit. Um, other than that, watch a lot of YouTube videos. Um, I love uh, Springfield Leather. The people there are very helpful. And if you call and have any questions, they, they know. I mean, most of the people that work there are leather crafters. Uh, they know, or they'll have somebody who does know, uh, answer your questions. Um, but yeah, Springfield Leather Company, they're out of Springfield, Missouri. Love their stuff. They're, they're pretty much my, uh, my go-to whenever I have questions or for all the, uh, all the materials that I use in making the products that I make. But yeah, start small. I mean, I started out with uh, three hundred dollars. I bought a, um, I bought a side of, I bought a half a cow, and uh, whole, you know, just some tools for the things that I wanted to make, and you know, that's where it grew from. You know, that first three hundred dollar investment grew into you know me doing this every day. So that's my advice, uh, Sean Curry. Do you do videos often? Man, I was doing videos uh, like once a week, once to twice a week, and that's my goal, but lately things have been crazy. Um, but no, my goal is to do at least one video a week. I want to do two two videos a week, but right now it's one video a week. Um, let's see, T. I used to tattoo... Once it became a job, I started to not enjoy it. <laughs> well, so far, I enjoy the leather work, so that hasn't happened to me where um, where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this or anything like that. You know, it's, it's completely enjoyable for me. Hopefully, I never get to the point to where I dread making something. The only thing I dread is uh, paying taxes. <laughs> That's probably the worst part about running a business. And let me tell you, it'll make you a Republican really quick. <laughs> Let's see, Sean Kerr, I've sold belts and buckles for over 20 years, but I only cut the belts to size and holes. My son grew up with the sales end of the business and wants to have some type of business cool yeah um i started you know the first uh first leather i had in my hands to do some work with i was gosh i was probably about 10 years old and a cub scout at a uh in a cub den i guess they call it it's not a troop it's a den when you're a cub scouts um some guy from my church you know and it was a cub scout um den through my church and uh this guy from my church he was like hey i'm gonna bring some leather stuff in and we made these little leather bead holders back then we called them coup beads and um i thought leather was the coolest thing on the planet and then as a teenager i was the kid at school always wearing a leather jacket and yep sometimes leather pants too <laughs> I've always had an affinity for leather. And then, um, I'd say about the last year I was in the army, I was like, you know what? I want to pick this up again. So I went out and bought it, and it just kind of grew from there. But yeah, you know, I totally encourage anybody, if you, you know, if you want, if you want to do this as a business, great business to have, especially if it's, Especially if you're a hobbyist, you know, if you really love doing it, you never work a day, and that's the way I feel. You know, I'm I'm doing my hobby all day, and people are paying me to do my hobby for them. So that's a great time. Yep. I went to college to be an architect. I joined the army. And, uh, you know, I don't think I'd change the army part, but 
Maybe I should have just been a leather <laughs> a leather crafter instead of going to college. Uh, when I was in college, I quickly uh, I quickly decided that uh, architecture was not the route for me. And I don't regret the decision. And you know, I'm not disparaging on architects, but you know, it just wasn't for me. Let's see, Sean Curry, someone gave me a box of leather craft tools years ago. They're still in my trailer with thousands of dollars in belts and buckles. This COVID shut shut down selling. Uh we go to bike runs and sell. Yep. I started out on on Etsy. Well, I started out. I started out on eBay actually, and I hated eBay. <laughs> I even had my things to where it was a fixed price, and nobody could bid anything smaller. And I didn't do anything for bidding. Um, you know, I just had the fixed price, but still, people would send me you know, private messages asking to get a cheaper price for things. And it would be like a wallet that I was selling for 150 bucks. And they'd be like, uh, I want to buy this for 50. And I'm like, what? Like the 50 bucks, that doesn't even cover. I was like, you know, that doesn't even cover the cost of the leather. And he's like, well, if you don't sell it to me, you know, nobody else is going to buy it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. So, uh, I found Etsy which was just so much better. You know, the people on there, they understand, hey, they're getting something handmade. Uh, and that's what Etsy's for. It's for people hand-making stuff. And um, Etsy worked out a lot better for me. And then once, you know, I outgrew Etsy and uh, started my own website. It was getting to the point to where business on Etsy was just not sustainable for what I'm doing. You know, my stuff takes time. And Etsy requires deadlines, so, you know, I got my own website. definitely glad I you know I was worried about having my own website because Etsy I mean they do have people on there who are ready to buy but let's be honest there's not a lot of <laughs> there's not a lot of biker dudes on Etsy wanting to buy leather stuff you know it's it's kind of the uh, you know the crafty moms who want to buy something that looks crafty and neat and unique uh, not really a whole lot of biker dudes who are like, oh, let's get on Etsy and see what biker stuff we have. And I mean, they do exist on there. You know, I was on there, but not really a lot. So they weren't really pushing a lot of, you know, there, there wasn't a big push for my products on Etsy. And, uh, so I, re I really don't, I don't feel like I lost out on anything. Choosing, uh, choosing to get my own website. All right. Sold mass-produced wallets for thirty bucks. A told one is eighty and eighty to one hundred easy. Yep. yep. Another problem is the biker dudes are getting old, and the young guys are buying lap bikes now. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a. Um, the younger guys are, are definitely a different breed. Um, they're completely happy with... Um, products made out of nylon. Uh, you know, they, they see leather as... A lot of them see leather as something old dudes get. Um, I mean, a lot of them... You know, I have a lot of young younger ones, but... A lot of them are, they're not going for leather jackets anymore. They're going for the high-tech jackets with the mesh and the, the whatever they have. 
And so leather working is kind of becoming a lost art, but there's still a lot of people that love it. And as long as people buy it, I will still make it. I will sell it. There we go. Gosh, got a lot of people that uh, have chimed in and are watching. So thank you all for watching. As I said in the beginning, I am making a fender bib from start to finish. Once this video is over, I will be publishing it as a whole thing on my YouTube channel so that everybody, anybody who's chiming in now can go back and take a look. Hopefully it won't be too long of a video. <laughs> It was really neat last night, um, you know, before the accident that I was in. Um, I was in a uh, clubhouse of a motorcycle club, and there was a guy there, and you know he does leather work too. It's always nice talking to him about the trade and what he makes and what I make, and but he also does like metal stuff with metal like he made this awesome looking axes you know and they're rustic you know they're like if you're looking for something that you know you can buy in the store that looks absolutely perfect and very clean and all that not the guy for you but i love the look of his stuff you know really rustic you can tell that you know just looking at it, you know the craftsman made this not something that came out of machine, not something that was, uh, what's it called, 3D printed or anything like that. That was really great. Uh, let's see. Sean Curry, where do you buy the leather from? Uh, I get all my leather from uh, Springfield Leather Company. They're my absolute favorite. Uh, I'll get from handy leather only if I'm in a bind and I gotta have something uh, they're a lot more expensive than Springfield leather uh, there's weaver leather but the problem with weaver leather you know I use all a grade leather but weaver leather they have a grade to C grade all lumped together and they're gonna send you whatever's next in the roll that they have and so they don't separate their leather by grade you're you're buying you're buying a piece of leather and it's going to be between a and c grade um now if i was making small things the c grade wouldn't be that big of a problem but when i make my really big heat shields i really need that a grade uh and so everybody knows all leather is the same it's all tan the same um the grade only implies on how many imperfections are in the leather. How many holes does the leather have? How many, um, how many mess ups does the leather have in it? Stuff like that. And so that's what's going to determine the grade of the leather. But they're all treated the same way. And uh, so those heat shields are about two feet you know, one foot by, by two feet, you know, a little bit longer than that. And so I can't use a leather, I can't use, a, you know, a hide that has a whole bunch of holes in it because, you know, it's, I'm not going to be able to use a lot. I'm going to have a lot of waste. And so I, I get A grade leather. Well, I get B grade leather from Springfield Leather Company, but it has so few holes that I can cut around them and not, not have a problem. But when it gets down to C grade or, you know, they try to say craftsman grade or whatever, 
Um, yeah, dude, you're dealing with a piece of leather that has a lot of holes. So, so I avoid weaver leather um, because I never know what I'm going to get. And they won't sell me B grade. They will sell me a side of leather. And it could be A grade. It could be B grade. It could be C grade. And they sell it for the same price. They sell it for the premium price that other places uh, sell, you know, just the highest grade. So I was like, oh, so you're going to charge me that much money for a side of leather. But this other company is going to charge me that much money for the same side of leather. But they're going to give me the grade, you know, the higher grade that I want. So, you know, not worth it. Um, so you had another, uh, another problem. Yeah. What was your other question there? If you make a seat cover, what thickness of leather? Oh, well, I, the only, uh, seat covers that I make are, uh, are for the chopper, um, what's it called? Chopper bobber style bikes or seats that, you know, you're not expecting comfort. You know, you're not expecting comfort from a bobber chopper or chopper style uh, pan seat. And for that, I'll use about an eight to nine ounce uh, thickness of leather. If I wanted to do something more comfortable, you know, like a regular seat, I, I would be looking at a three ounce piece of leather. But still, leather is not as comfortable as vinyl. And that's why Harley Davidson uh, moved to vinyl. So my, my leather's drying out here. So I'm just gonna hit that up with a little bit of water. But that's the reason why Harley Davidson went to vinyl instead of leather. It's it's just more comfortable. It just, it really is. Um, but say you have a Harley Davidson seat and you want to put some leather on it, take the vinyl off, put some leather on it that has some art. I would be using probably about a three ounce, three ounce thickness. But you're going to lose some of that comfort. Uh, one idea is to do the seat the top of the seat with that three ounce thickness but then leave the sides with the vinyl which is a lot easier to do if you're doing black on black now if you're doing brown or anything trying to match <laughs> trying to match colors is, is is almost impossible it's possible but you're going from vinyl to leather it's going to have a different tone to it undertone it's gonna look different no yeah final answer would be about a three three ounce piece of leather is what I would use on the seat unless it's a bobber chopper style seat then I'd use a, a thicker piece of leather now, I'm actually gonna do a buddy seat where he has the vinyl and uh, I'm going to put a patch over the vinyl and I'm going to use some three ounce leather and uh, we're going to do, you know, the pat the leather patch is going to be stitched into the vinyl. So we got to take the vinyl off the seat and then put it back on. And he wants a, he wants his club patch on it. So I got the authorization from his, from their national, so we're gonna be doing that. Should look awesome. Whenever we do it, I'll be posting pictures of it in the future. Yes, yeah, so, um, Sean, you asked, uh, are you going over what you did again? So yes, the first time that I went over it was with this knife. And so you, you pretty much, you pretty much go over your art five times. Uh, once when you make it, you know, if you're drawing it out, so you, you did it once. And then a second time when you draw it onto here, a third time when you cut it into the leather, a fourth time when you bevel it to make the, uh, the art pop out. And then a fifth time when you dye it. 
So every piece of art gets, you know, especially the art that I draw um, is, is done out, <laughs> is traced over and done out five times. If I don't draw it, it's something that I'm, you know, somebody sent me it and they want me to do it and I'm just, you know, tracing exactly what they sent me, and then it's four times. But, you know, these, using this beveler, it makes, uh, it makes the art pop out more. Which I know is hard to see on the video, but once you get it in your hands, you can really, you can really tell when you're looking at it in person. Vinyl's not the same. I had a Ultimate XC, great seat. Leather is just the only way to go. Oh, the tip of the bevel. Here it is, Sean. So you can see that. But it's just, instead of being flat, it's beveled on one end. Okay, we're almost done here. Well, I'm done with the words, anyway. you break it in yeah I've heard that for a lot from the Indian writers um, but you know there is that break-in period where with vinyl there's no break-in period so you got to break it in leather definitely looks better than vinyl I think it has a better look to it, it has a better feel to it but but yeah. some more people watching welcome everybody hope I don't bore you too much <laughs> how I do my job this is one of those jobs people like to watch I mean when I worked for Pepsi nobody wanted to watch me working <laughs> nobody wanted me wanted to watch me doing that job Just ordering sodas and putting sodas on the shelf yeah kind of boring I'm not going to lie, I love my job at Pepsi. That was a great job to have. Uh, really good company to work with. But the leather work was taken off, and my disabilities were hurting me pretty bad. So, I quit. ever since it's about the middle of what was it 2019 I've been doing leather work just leather work and Forge Glory has existed for six years but I had to have a J job for a long time
All right, now the skull. Now with the leather, uh, it is wet, so I could do the art. And so I can't dye it while it's wet. So this is gonna have to sit a couple hours or so. Sometimes a couple hours, sometimes it takes all day. Sometimes it'll take 24 hours or longer but I think this will only take a couple hours to dry before I start uh, applying the dye. So while it's dying, I'll be working on other products. And I've seen other leather crafters and uh, they'll do a piece and they'll have a weight so that the leather doesn't move and the leather never moves and they're doing all these angles and everything uh, I don't work that way <laughs> I prefer being able to move the leather as I'm working so I can get the exact right angle that I want on it well, other guys they do good with it being stationary but if you see you know I'm moving my piece of leather so I can get the right angle just different techniques that different people use. So when this is done, uh, it's gonna be the art here in the center is gonna be in white and grays, white, grays, and blacks. And then the rest of it is gonna be all black. So black background with white art, it's gonna have this like real rustic look to it look awesome but anyway uh start to finish um just the art and i'll be doing the dye once it dries which is not going to take very long maybe i'll do it tonight i don't know we'll see anyway have a good night thank you for watching everybody i remember here at fort Lauderdale, we're all about the uh the uh what are we about <laughs> we're all about the leather your design and my shop coming together to make some great products. Uh, truly, you know, I have the leather. You guys tell me what you want on it, and that's what I make. And I don't mass, I don't mass produce anything. Everything is what you guys want. That's my niche in this market. Uh, nothing's mass produced. It's all exactly how you want it. Anyway, have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.